Well, hello there, you two. Uh, needless to say, it's pouring down rain, so I'm uh, seeing my my startings or my hellos from uh, from afar here. Today's uh, Tuesday, the 19th of December. Um, started out like around 40. I think it's like 44, 45 now, and just dumping. It's been doing this pretty much all morning. <laughs> Welcome to our world. It's already starting to pool up out here and everything. It was just light rain. I, I guess I shouldn't say it's dumping all morning. It's pretty much light. For the most part, that's light. That's like crazy when you go down the freeway. Just that little bit of trinkle. Look how wet the car got, and I just, just now rolled it out of the shop. Wish us luck. It's crazy out there. 46 degrees. And most of the way here was pouring down rain. Yes, it was. Glad it's not pouring here. That's yeah. bad that driving all that rain, then go have to walk down the side of the building in the pouring rain. Yeah, get soaked <laughs> before you even get inside. Yeah. I hate that. But Mama? Yes, I have. We made it to Tuesday. We did. You know, this coming Monday is Christmas. I know. She snuck them. Jeez. Man, that happened fast. Mm-hmm. Seems like it was so long, so far away, and all of a sudden, whoa, well, wait, well, what? It's next Monday. <laughs> well, Mama. Yes, I have. Have yourself a wonderful Tuesday. You too. And I'll see you as the day goes on. All right. All right. Love you. See you. Bye. I love you. Bye-bye now. Bye. This has been my day today. <laughs> Actually, I did some training stuff. Corporate-type training. Um, My air filter is actually out for delivery through DHL I don't know if it's going to make it here but before we leave or not it left Portland at like 205 this afternoon that's pretty wild it wasn't supposed to be here until tomorrow or Thursday I think yeah I think it's supposed to be here tomorrow but it's out for delivery I don't know how many stops he's got by the time he gets before he gets here but he left the Portland facility. It has actually not rained most of the day today. You see something wild? There's some good chain maintenance for you. You'd be surprised how often I see this. People buy a battery for their bike and they'll use the vent hose it comes with when these old KLRs actually had a vent hose ready for you to connect to it. A lot of times I take a fresh piece and stick it in the, the rubber piece that's there, but. Yeah, buddy, that's pretty rough. I don't know what it's in here for. 1,500 miles. She's still a puppy. Unfortunately, the air filter showed up about 11 minutes after we left. We are driving along and, and uh, well, I checked it. Going by the time, it was 11 minutes, but we were way too far away from the shop to turn around and go back. We had already made it to the freeway. And, uh, and I had Kelly check my mail right quick, and there it was, delivered, DHL. So I do have the filter. What scares me is it says it was delivered it said service area, Portland, Oregon. So hopefully Vancouver is considered the Portland, Oregon service area for DHL. But um, yeah, anyway, I had to wait for that. What I, I thought would be kind of fun to goof around with, because we started that last night. Does the GT650 have any codes? How about my Himalayan? So... Maybe we should grab the little, I've already stuck the keys in them. Because I planned on doing this. Oh, it's kind of ready. Oh, keys in the in the unlatch box back there. But let me, uh, let me grab the scan tool. We'll see if uh, if these two, I don't think I have done anything with either one of these to, to cause anything. You know, if I got something, I know what I did on that one. I decoupled the uh, coupler from the, um, throttle body and uh, to get the pins to go in and I uh, reconnected it 
well, I got distracted. I don't know if Kelly called me in for something. I don't know what it was, but got distracted. I remember coming back out and turning the key on and um, going, oh, man, I looked down and her, um, the, the connector was disconnected from her. I said, well, that's going to throw some codes, which it did. So I knew that was going to have something. I don't remember if either one of these have ever had a EFI light go off before. Nothing that happened while I was riding. I just don't know if I've ever done anything to it, cycled a key or something <laughs> to make it go off. But uh, let's grab the scan tool. Let's, let's play a little bit. I like playing around. What y'all think? Let's get her done. <laughs> so the same setup. Diagnostic port just right here under the seat. And um, I'm almost positive it's right under the seat on this one, too. I don't think it's under the other cover. This cover keys off the other one. You got to take a, I think it's a four millimeter Allen on the top of the cover, then it'll pop out. That's how they secure the other side without a key. That's where all your relays and stuff are, is on that left side. But anyway, we'll just give her some key action here. Wake the old module up here. Give her diagnose right out the gate. I don't think of anything on either one. Yeah. DDCs and ECU is zero. Oh, let's take a uh, um, a look at at uh, the data stream on this. I just want to see where the where the TPS is on this one. What percentage it's showing? It's like the third page, wasn't it? Yeah, see, 12.9%. That's different than Kelly's. And then the back side of it, it's also at 4%. So what I like to do is set the, this one to the same 11%. And again, you know, just twisting the throttle, well, it'll show, if I can get it to focus, the reaction. It should go close to... Yeah, so it goes to 75%. It goes back down to 12.9. I think that's the key to uh, getting this this one to... I mean, everything runs fine. It's just that, just that initial start after it's been sitting, sitting for a while. It's got all kinds of information. Everything you need to know. And a whole lot more. There is, um, you go through the readiness thing and it just tests things. But you can go into vehicle information. I'm not going to show you that, but that's where your, your VIN number and stuff is. I'm just going to do a quick check here and make sure it's right. I'll be right back. I, I've literally found a bike that the VIN number didn't match the frame. Um, not on a Royal Enfield, but I've seen it before. It's rare, but you see it. Hang tight. She's bought on. I'm obviously not going to give you my uh, my VIN number. <laughs> yeah, no codes on this one. She's nice. She's nice and fresh. Oh, I already hit the exit thing there. No problems. She's she's healthy. Always has been. And like I say, because it does not see oil pressure. It doesn't have like a separate oil light. When it's sitting here still, there's no oil pressure, so it will it will show that that's that's what it's throwing. It's not a fault. But you'll notice as soon as you start it up, oil pressure and then very quickly afterwards the battery, the charging system goes away. Just like you're sitting here with the headlight on, even though I've got a tender lead connected to it. The these little tenders don't uh i mean they're a maintainer you can see the light looks kind of orange uh, i can you know i could have looked at the voltage in there too it'll show you what the system voltage is seeing at any point but it'll like i say it'll start of course oil pressure comes up almost immediately so that goes out and then just like a second or two the charge light will go out 
ABS will not go out until you start moving and it does a self test. Most bikes that flashes. This one flashes, I think, when you have the ABS turned off or something. Flashes for a bit. I, I don't recall how it worked, but anyway, the um, ABS goes off as soon as you move. I think it's like three miles an hour. It's typical for uh, bikes, cars, whatever. But uh, yeah, there you are. Sounds clear. Could be more interesting to get to the GT, but we'll pop that off right quick. Hang tight again. <laughs> I'll button this one back up first. So first, you need a key because you gotta take, to get the seat off, this cover is keyed. So you just spin her, oh, and then it's pins welded to the frame. So you have to pull down on the cover. See the grommets are at the top and the pins are right there. It's Kind of dark to see those. Let's sit you up here. So I'm here to get the seat off. I'm gonna put this in my pocket before I send it flying. You got an old pull cord, and I'm probably not gonna be able to do that one hand. Yep, I could do it one handed. There's the seat. Nice and simple. Look at the dust back there. Oh, look at that. It's just sitting right here on a on a tab. Oh, and it's clipped down, too. And there you are. I like that. Little stickers all over the place. They really care what they're doing. You know who else? And the only ones that I see that has little markings, you know, little, you know, little, um, what do they call them, oil pins or whatever, where they mark all over the place. That company right there. Always have that stuff in here. You pull a like a derby cover over. Sometimes there's stuff written behind there. Just that's just people that care about what they're doing, and you gotta love that toolkit. I don't think I've ever even opened, and it even says okay on it. How about that? <laughs> All right, let's look it up. All right, what's the thing up behind there? Oh, nice water. Let's have just a rubber boot like the Himalayans had. This one's got a nice uh, cap on it. And this one had a rubber boot on it as well. But, uh, yeah, key on. It scared me for a second. It didn't immediately light up. Like, well, I didn't plug it into the wrong thing, did I? <laughs> or wait. Let's cue in some, uh, you know, music while we're waiting for it to scan. Look at that. Zero. Zero codes. Oh, that's cool. No codes. Well, I was hoping there'd be something there. It'd be fun to just play with something, wouldn't it? Let's go to data stream here. Let's see what kind of cool stuff it's got. Is that? I wonder what that stands for. But uh, you can have the thing running, and uh, you can live monitor all this stuff as well. And take air temperature. How's that 26 degrees Fahrenheit? Oh, wait a minute. I know why. Part of why that's low. But yeah, you can watch your uh, um, RPMs, everything. Throttle position sensor seems to be something about that 11 percent. We need to do an adjustment on my Himalayan. Yep. Engine oil temperature, 59 degrees. This one shows engine oil temperature as well because part of that um, uh, oil cooling system that it has, this is at the, the butt end of one of those oil jackets is that oil temperature switch. Now, I don't see anything that regulates that, like a thermostat or anything like that. I have to dig a little deeper to check into that, but it uh, it is monitoring it, and uh, I guess based on the temperature it's seeing, because this is where it comes out just before it crosses over and comes down, you know, on the cam chain tunnel side, which this is a cooler side of the head because the cylinder's more to the right. 
you know, you got this gap where the chem chain tunnel's running, where the chem chain's running, they call it the chem chain tunnel, and it's running down a, a circuit and going back to the sump to be reused. So that's probably monitoring after it's cooled and probably making some, um, you know, fuel system, uh, fuel management adjustments based on the temperature it's seeing. And what I've heard from people, you know, the different reviews, these things just flat don't overheat. In fact, someone asked about why don't I put an oil cooler on it? I go, well, <laughs> they very wisely and very effectively installed one. Oh, I'm so impressed with this light. I have three more of them coming. One of them is showing up overnight and will be here tomorrow. And I think, I think the other two will be Thursday. I really like the way that looks. I don't mind a halogen light because it's usually wet and dark around here all the time. So a warmer light is actually better for cold, foggy, damp lighting, which that, that speaks for the Pacific Northwest with spades. <laughs> anyway, let's bounce out of this stuff here. Ooh, the relay stays powered. You've made a little sound. Yeah, it's got a delay. Should power down. It's not going to last forever. Oh, there she went. All right. That's enough playing around. Play with scan tools again today. I was just thinking about doing that today. And I said, you know what? If I don't have anything to do today, that's what I'm going to do. So here we are. So let me put this back together. Me and Mom will sit down and do a goodbye. And we'll roll out for the day on that. Thanks for once again hanging out in um, Royal Enfield Row. <laughs> I need to take a thumbnail or something going across here. Although Kelly sport a little Himalayan and it's kind of hidden by my Himalayan. But um, anyway, thanks for uh, hanging out with me. Well, hello there, you two. Boy, was that a quiet day at work for us techs. I mean... Wow, it was quiet today. But that's okay. I made up for it. We That's scary that you can't stay on the road any better than that. Yeah. Despite all that racket and noise. But anyway, made up for it. Goofing around with the Himalayans. That was a lot of fun. Hope you guys... I mean, say Himalayan. Royal Enfields. There's multiple Royal Enfields here. But, um... Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that stuff. I enjoy doing it. It's something to tinker with. Just play around. Little tools and stuff. That's cool. Tools. Yeah. Yes, Danny, nice. you meat mongrel. <clears throat> well, anyway, we're going to bounce out on that. And uh, we'll call it a night. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give her thumbs up. You guys have <coughs> an amazing <Excuse> me. <coughs> Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, all right. Thanks for watching now. We'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye now.